Here's part three of the D Daisy and Rose lace collar by Megan Mills. I've put the edge on the original piece that I abandoned and in doing so I found out why I abandoned it and you can learn from this lesson. I had only put two loops at the top so I had to rearrange all the medallions and re-crochet re the last row so that I would have three loops at the top so keep that in mind it's very very important. Another thing I found out and I half expected it but it proved to be true when you make lace you need a solid edge at the at the border if you want to have a wearable piece of lace because when you have just chains it's quite a feeble border and what I think might happen is if you put this on a dress or on a blouse and you wear it and the weather's damp all this might curl in on itself if you look here this is what happens so what I've done is I've reinforced the edge by going over that last row with single crochet I'll show you that when I show you how to make the border another disaster I discovered was how not to dry thread I dropped the ball of cream thread in a bucket of water by accident and I wanted to get on with finishing off this collar in a larger thread and I decided to put the thread in a warm oven thinking it would dry quickly and I'd be able to get on with my work but within minutes the thread turned brown and that was the end of it. There aren't many shops in my town and there aren't any that sell thread so I've decided to finish off with this lilac thread and I'll put the edge on this piece and show you how it's done. So this is number 10 thread this is a number two, uh, a two millimeter crochet hook and what you have to do is start at the third loop of picots at the neck and you're going to work outwardly so as I'm left-handed I'll be working this side but if you're right-handed you'll probably be working that side so you work you take the third loop on the last medallion and that'll be the outer edge the three inner loops will serve the inner edge. This row is quite easy. So between the two picots, you pass your hook and make a single cr crochet. Chain 14. and make a single crochet again between the two picots on the next loop and you work your way around doing this when you reach the last picot of the medallion you join the two medallions together by chaining eight make a picot in the sixth chain do that by making a single crochet into it and chain five then make a single crochet in the first loop of the next medallion so now I'll make 14 chains single crochet between these different loops and then between the two medallions I'll do another of these long picots so chain 8 
picot in sixth chain, chain five. So that's where you work your way around until you come to the last picot of the outer edge. So now I've made the 14 chains single crochet into each loop around the outer edge. There are seven loops on the edge and four loops on the medallions in the middle. Now we're going to tackle the neck edge and to do that you chain 12 single crochet between the two picots on the next loop chain 12 single crochet into the last loop free on that medallion and between the two medallions you're going to make a short picot chain which is chain six single crochet into the fourth chain chain five and then single crochet into the first three loop on the next medallion. So you see there's two bars with picots between the medallions and you do that up to the end. So I've reached the other edge of the collar and now I make a slip stitch once I get my hook right into the top of the single crochet in the first row and I'm, and I'm now ready to start the, cl the cl groups of clusters that line the edge of the outer collar. I start by making a slip stitch in the first three chains Then I make a single crochet into the space, chain three, and that will form the first leg of a cluster. So I make a treble pull through the thread twice, leave the last one on the loop, on, on the hook, pull the thread through all three loops, chain five, a single crochet in the third chain, chain three, and make another cluster. This time I have four loops on the hook. So now we're going to make a longer picot bar. Chain seven. A single crochet in the, in the fifth chain. Chain four and make another cluster. Now we're going to make another shorter picot bar, chain five, single crochet in the fifth chain, chain three, and make another cluster. So this group of clusters needs to be repeated on each loop 
on the outer edge. You join them up by a five chain between. So chain five, and you start another cluster. So the two outer pico bars are short ones, the middle one is slightly longer. So here we go, I'll start the next cluster, short bar, single crochet in the third, chain three, and make another cluster. So you work your way around like that, up to the last 14 chain loop. Between the medallions you skip the chain with the picot and you continue on the very first loop of the next medallion. I've reached the end of the outer edge and now I'm going to start on the inner edge. So to start I'm going to chain three and then I'm going to make a treble chain three four times. And now I'm going to make a forward treble which is one partially partial treble into this 12 chain space and another one into the next space without pulling through the loop so I've got three loops on my hook and pull it through so it forms like a V. And now I'm going to make three trebles into the next space. And now to bridge between the two medallions we leave this middle chain with picot untouched but we make a double treble without completely finishing it so we leave the loop on the hook and then make another one in the next loop of the medallion, of the next medallion. Pull the thread through both. And now we just repeat that to the end. So three trebles interspersed with three chain And now again a treble to bridge the two loops. And we do that to the end. And now again we're going to do a double double treble so that's the one double treble and 
and this is the next one up to the end we make one additional treble in the last loop before the outer edge chain three and join it to the top of the first cluster so this is what we have now to finish it off we make three single crochet in each free sp chain space up to the other end of the neck so I've covered each free chain space with three single crochet and for the last row chain one turn and repeat so you do three single crochet over each single crochet between the spaces and then you'd be finished and do this to the end so after that double row of single crochet along the neck edge it's finished and we can pin it out always use stainless steel pins so they don't rust so I've calculated that these three medallions are equivalent to five medallions on the on, on the collar made with 80 thread so now I'm going to finish making an edge on this one and my next video I'll be showing you how to wash lace how to how to pin it out and I'm also going to show you how to dye it I will be using tea or coffee I'm not sure yet I'll be doing a little trial first to see what the colors look like but I was thinking if this came out in a nice tan color it would make a lovely lace collar for a, a, a silk blouse this collar reminds me a little bit about of the old pictures you see of the stewards with their lace collars in the paintings it's very very pretty and very very dainty so here you can see them together you will find a link to Megan Mills' website with the pattern below this video. I hope you enjoy making this as much as I did. It took me a couple of years to finish it but I'm delighted I have.